Welcome to the Raw Experience. I'm Stephanie, and I'm here with my husband, Derek. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, that's why I leave the intros to you. Thank you. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, coaching. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to actually go through with the new intro? Oh, you want a new intro? Okay, fine. Give him a better intro. And we're back for episode three. I'm your co-host. Well, I was only yeah. coast. Oh, God. This is terrible. Let's, let's just keep going. Yeah, it's fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Episode three. We're back. Yes. We've had a uh, little bit of a hiatus, but we're back. We left for a tad moment mm -hmm. uh, due to just somebody getting a new job. And uh, now we're financially stable again. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So today we're going to talk about coaching. Okay. Coaching so then, in the industry, coaching with us as coaches okay. and what we've seen from other people with coaching. So how long have you been coaching? Do you even know? <laughs> I would say that I don't even know at this point. Like I just, honestly, I'm so off and on with it. There was a point where I didn't want to take people and then I would come back, but I, I, I don't know what I, I <laughs> I don't know. I've been coaching since GNC and Which GNC like was back in how like many years ago, 2012. Okay. You know, I'd write people diets. I would help customers and stuff like that. So I've been coaching probably since 2012, since I did my first body yeah. show, kind of like the same as everybody else. When they first do the body show, they turn into a coach. I, well, yeah, pretty much. But I, I think I started around 2010 or 11. Okay. It was a little bit after nursing school. And so I've been coaching for a long time. I person well, I've been personal training for a long time. Oh God, personal training. Personal training in person. And I don't think I was coaching online until maybe like five years later when it was actually a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um I but at, I've been we've been both coaching for a long time. Yeah. I was a personal trainer at a this place called Bally's. Do you remember Bally's? You ever heard of those? No, it sounds like a strip club. Like, no, it's like an old gym. It was an old like uh, franchise. It was kind of like LA Fitness, but it was called Bally's. Um, okay. And I would, I actually started personal training. That was my first personal training job. Um, very corporate, like, mm. yeah, kind of weird. Okay. Well, anyways, well, we've been coaching for a long time. Yes. And we've seen a lot in the industry. We've seen a lot with bad coaches, with good coaches, with being competitors ourselves, and hiring coaches. We've seen a lot and kind of what I want to talk about is not only is the industry very saturated with coaches, because like you said, everyone's a coach, right? right. Everyone's a coach who, if they lost 10 pounds, now they're a coach. They want to be online coach. They want to make money. Um, but let's talk about the good things of a coach, right? Sure. So what would you say are a good quality or... How should I say this? What would you say are the best qualities of a, a good coach Ooh. that you're looking for? Right. So I think when you, when you look for a coach, you need to have a, uh, a so-called vibe, right? Mm -hmm. You have to vibe with them and whatever right. that means to you. Um, a good conversation in the beginning on a phone call. Mm -hmm. I feel this is just my opinion. If a coach doesn't want to go on a call with you or a phone call. Correct. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just a little more hesitant to to go with that coach, but I understand if that coach is very busy as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and how many times does a coach get on a call with someone and they spend 30 minutes and they don't sign up? Right. So it sucks when that happens, and I mean, because it happens to me all the time. But right. I always want to give that client as much information that I can in that phone call, in the initial phone call. Um just to let them kind of get to know me. I get to know them, but it's unfortunate that it happens a lot where I talk to people and nobody signs well, up. That, that kind of leads into like our, our topic for this is like, how are we as coaches? And, right. and I want to ask you because you're the one that has 50 plus people. So I would consider you a real coach myself, Thank you. <laughs> myself. <laughs> I, I only have about 10. Um, the reason why is because I deal with the HRT patients. Right. So you coach people all day long, but you're also not, you know, you're very heavily into your job. Yes. Whereas that is something that you actually like to do. Right. And right. You're not going to, you know, right. do coaching on the right. side so, as much as me. So let me ask you this. How, how are you as a coach? So as far as, I mean, I could break it down to you like I do with my clients, but you know, the typical check-ins, mm -hmm. you know, once a week, um, I'm very big on communication. So 
I need my clients to communicate with me if there's something going wrong, if they didn't follow the plan. Um, they need to communicate with me. Otherwise, I don't know how to change their plan. And I think that's the biggest thing that people don't understand when, you know, they're coaching with someone is how am I supposed to change the plan if they, you know, they ate off plan and they don't tell me, right? So they have to be able to communicate with me. And that's the biggest thing. You have to have communication with me and you have to be honest, right? And what I expect from my clients back is, you know, they're going to be honest, but they're actually going to give me effort. Um, I'm kind of all over the place, but coaching, I mean, I don't know how you want me to answer that by, you know what I'm saying? Like I, the communication is key. So whether I'm texting a client, um, emailing back and forth, that's, that's the main source of communication. And I expect them to put forth the effort to stay on track with their plan and let me know otherwise. I mean, I, I guess where I was trying to go with it is like, <clears throat> when a person comes to you, what do you offer as a coach? Right. Mm -hmm. So if I came to you and I was looking for a coach and I said, Hey, I'm interested in coaching. What do you offer? Like, how is your process? So people know like, Hey, when you, when they come to you, they get X, Y, and Z with you. Yeah. It's not a short-term process Right, is the short answer is you have to be willing to put in the work and know that you're not going to see changes overnight. And I do things the healthy way. So I'm not the type of coach that's just going to, Oh, you want to lose 30 pounds, you're going to lose 30 pounds in, in a month mm -hmm. and you're going to be great to go forever. Like it's, and we're going to fuck up your metabolism in the process. That's not me as a coach. So I'm going to make sure that not only am I looking at how you are physically, but how you are mentally and how you deal with relationships with food, um, how you deal with anxiety, how your sleep patterns are. Um, I go into so many different things, digestion. Um, it's not just here's a meal plan, follow it and you'll probably lose weight. And if I slash your calories by three quarters, you're obviously going to lose weight, but that's not the proper way to do it. That's not the healthy way to do it. And especially with competitors, um, I'm not the one pushing a bunch of gear. I'm doing it, do it the right way. Train for 10 years. Um, you know? Yeah. When I, when I think about coaching people, I think the number one thing that people look for is to see when you're going to change your plan, right? Mm -hmm. So people need the plan changed. hundred percent. One of the things is that if the plan is working, why change it? Have you given the plan enough time? But people don't understand that. Right. So people, don't, people, people think that a lot of people think that you need to change the plan all the time, every week. Right. What's my new, what's my new food plan for this week? What's my new training plan? Well, the training one, the, actually the training one gets me more. Right. Right. So how can you get good at something if you're constantly changing it? Right. You can't, the definition of shocking the muscle, that's the biggest bullshit I've ever heard of. Well, yeah, there, it goes back to, there's so many myths right. with weight loss. I mean, all the fad diets that are out, that have been out, Atkins, keto, you know, whatever's ozempic right now, you know, whatever's the biggest thing to do. Carnivore is the biggest thing. Yeah. It's like, it, that's not always the best thing to do. And all of those things have the same thing in common. It's slashing your, except for ozempic, it's slashing your calories. So it's making, it's, it's making a big deficit. So you're going to lose weight, but is it establishing a healthy relationship with food? Is it teaching you how to nourish your body right. and fuel your body for training? You know, is it all of those things? No, it's just a huge calorie deficit. So of course you're going to lose weight. And then once you binge because you haven't had a cookie in three months and you eat all the cookies in sight, and then of course you're going to gain weight. And then you're going to be like, well, the only thing that worked for me was yeah. the keto diet or the Atkins or, you know, whatever it may be. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Sorry. Christ. Don't touch that thing. What about when, um, what about when a client, cause I, I have this happen since we're going down this, I can't stand when a client comes to you. Mm-hmm. And yet they tell you what they want to do or they, what they want to take. And they do this, but they're paying you for your experience and right. your knowledge, but yet they want to dictate, you know, I, where they want to go. Right. I, I think that becomes difficult because some people are really in tune with their body and yes. some people know, Hey, this doesn't work for me. Hey, this is what works for me. But I think they also need to be open to the fact that they're hiring a new coach and this could be a new thing that they can do that might work yeah. versus, is that what you're, you're so talking about? So I was about? actually going towards the people that are lifestyle clients. 
and you have never had a coach. Oh, yeah. They don't compete, but they yeah. want to come to you and tell you what they want to do and how they should do it. Listen, you came to me and you paid me, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to tell me what to do? Right. This is what you should probably do. You should probably shut the fuck up <laughs> and sit there and listen, because how you look right. for the last 30 something years, I guess you didn't know. Right. So that's where I have the problem is when someone comes to you and tell, wants to tell you what they should be doing. Why, why am mm -hmm. I here? And I have, a, I have clients like that, that still yeah, want to count macros, that still want to do whatever they want to do and they don't listen. And honestly, after certain conversations, it's just like, all right, I guess I'm just going to continue to be your coach because you're just going to continue to keep doing what you want to do. Yeah, let me and, but then there's no progress. And so it's really, it's hard to put forth the effort with those clients yeah. because they just do whatever. Yep. And you're just like, yeah. all right, I'm going to continue to tell you to do this, or I'm going to continue to tell you to not diet because you're eating 50 carbs a day for the last five years. And that's not healthy. Mm. Right. What else am I supposed to do? It's kind of hard to take someone's money. And let them mm -hmm. keep doing something. So I'd rather not right. have them as a client because the $200 sure. a month that you're trying to pay me is not worth the time that I have to put into you and the headache that I have to do. Right. And then I have to bitch at you because I'm like, this right. fucking client can't t fucking follow shit. Yeah. Let me say this. If you come to a coach, because now we're going to get on a rant. If you come to a <laughs> fucking coach and you say, I want to take more gear. What else can I take? But yet you can't fucking follow the plan for right. seven days straight. You miss your cardio. You miss training. You fuck up. How are you going to take gear? What are you doing? Yeah. You can't even do anything straight for 30 fucking days. Is that like your biggest pet peeve? Of That's my biggest thing. <laughs> my biggest pet, my biggest thing is you know, as a client is when you come to me and you, and you don't know fuck all. And then right. you tell me what you want to do. And then you ask me, what else can I take? But you can't even fucking go seven days, a hundred percent. Right. On anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I fucking didn't sleep. Okay. Sleep is a, I understand it's sleep is probably not, the hardest thing that people can, you can. It's not the end all be all right. in somebody's plan. You can control your sleep, mm -hmm. but sometimes you really can't. Maybe, maybe you can still, yeah, you yeah. can still so, make progress, but you can't, you can't, you miss your cardio, you miss your training and you fucked up on your diet. And I got yeah. clients that do that every fucking week. <laughs> and this is why I don't want to coach. Yeah. This is why I'm actually tired of coaching. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you my biggest pet peeve, I guess, with coaching is the competitors or the lifestyle clients, but mo mostly the competitors who will come to me and they want to do the show in 20 weeks or 18 weeks. Right. So I do all this work with them. We get them ready for the show. And then all of a sudden they can't afford me for the off season. So they're like, Hey, I'm going to do my own thing, which means they're going to fuck off for the next eight months to a year. Then they're going to come back to me when they're ready to do another show. And there is zero progress from when they last. And probably we have to redo some of the progress that they messed up throughout the off season that the off season, which they were partying, drinking, right. doing all that stuff. So that you come back to me, you want to get better, but you didn't do anything to get better, you know, and with me or without me, it's like, you right. just signed back up. Well, yeah, she was a great coach. Well, yeah, but right, right, right. you're going to look the exact same right. because you didn't do anything to make yourself right. better. Now I do have to say within that, with the competitors, sometimes the process it, it, as you get deeper into it, right. As your competitor, that process slows down a lot. Mm -hmm. So that, that progression state is, isn't as holy shit. Right. Right. Maybe you've gained three pounds of muscle or two pounds, or maybe you've brought up certain things. But if you're a serious but, competitor, yeah. those little changes, you see those, right. You see those little changes. Wow. Okay. My back was a little bit bigger. Okay. Now I can, yeah. that's then next off season, I'm going to work on this, but you see those little changes. And yeah. in the first, like, I would say five years of maybe competing of really doing right. it, you see a lot of changes. You see drastic. You saw how my physique changed yours, you yeah. know, of being just consistent. You can make a lot of progress, but then if you're not going to continue to do that, you're not going to see that progress. And how are you supposed to turn pro when? Right, 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 right. Well, everybody, I feel like I'm using these a lot today. No. <laughs> everybody wants to be a pro. Well, we're not going to get started on that. That thing sounds like a fucking gong in like a uh, a temple. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So. Well, let me ask you this. What about coach hopping? Now, coach hopping, and what I mean by that, because I've had several coaches Right. Mm -hmm. And I've gone through preps with some coaches. 
Um, I've left some coaches thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. And I've came back to them Mm -hmm. or wanted to go back, you know, so. I don't think that's considered coach hopping. In my opinion, we go back to the competitors who are unable to stay consistent with the plan for whatever reason. Let's say they're in a bad relationship or they have anxiety or they're just terrible at executing the plan. Those people turn to different coaches because they're looking for something new that they haven't found. And what they're looking for is in themselves, is in the work that you are unwilling to do. That's that's what you're missing. It's not a new coach that's going to give you a brand new plan or a brand new gear protocol Mm -hmm. that's going to change your physique. It's the work that you're unwilling to do. So then you hop from coach to coach to coach trying to find the answer. And the answer has been your lack of consistency. It's your lack of drive and dedication to the sport itself. That's, that's what I think yeah. for coach hopping, but okay. So we talked about how we are as coaches. Well, I talked about kind of how I was. Do you want to talk about how you are as a coach? Yeah. <sighs> You're not selling yourself very well. I'm just fucking sell myself right now. <laughs> I'd rather sell you more than me. Okay. So I, I kind of wrote down some things about good, good quality of coach and a bad quality of okay. coach. Okay. So the good coaches out there. Number one thing is they're going to look out for their your health. Mm-hmm. I would say that's probably the yeah, number one thing for sure. besides communication. If the coach is going to communicate with you consistently, you know, you don't, it's not like you don't hear from them for five days a week. Right. You know, you reach out to them, th- you know, they reach back. Like that's how I am. I, I always tell I within 24, 24 hours, hours, right? I but, tell my clients within 24 hours, unless you're texting me in the middle of the night saying you didn't yeah. shit, I don't care. Right, right. I'll get to it in the morning, yeah. you know, but- Communication and looking out for your health. So again, we go to I got, I, with gear. I, yeah, but I have devil's advocate on that. What do you mean? Because a lot of people, yes, a good coach looks after your health, but well, in a, the as sport a, of bodybuilding, as a client for bodybuilding, you want to produce results, and right. I want results as an athlete. So when I go to a coach, I wouldn't say that I put my health to the side, but I understand that there are risks, and I understand we have to do certain things to achieve that. So staying within a healthy parameter. Well, correct. But the only person that has to deal with your issues after bodybuilding is yourself. So. Right. And I don't think I'm, I don't mean like you're trying to be the healthiest person out there. Right. Obviously okay. if, if you're competing, you already know, right. I think you should know right. you're not going to be the healthiest person. Right. Um, but I think looking out for your health, seeing, looking at your health markers during off season, making sure that your labs are okay. Um, whether it's your blood pressure, your glucose, everything like that. Um, but also not pushing gear all year round. And at the same time, not pushing shows all year round, making sure you take an off season. I consider that to be healthy. Okay. So you're taking care of not only your competitor during the prep, but also during the off season sure. and also taking care of them mentally too, because guiding them through a reverse diet right. is probably the most difficult, more difficult than prep and making sure that you don't just drop them and you say, Hey, I'm here for you. I'm going to talk you through this. How do it goes? I mean, I think that's really important. And I think that's being a good coach is being healthy all, yeah, all, you know, on all aspects, Yeah, I agree. even though, you know, it's not healthy right, no, the sport you. itself. Um, I also said honest feedback and criticism. You know, I think that not telling someone if they're not as lean as they should be, you have, you should tell them as a coach, right? You have to tell them, Hey, we're not ready for a show. 100%. 100% Jesus. 100%. I listen, there's so many people that put, so many people that put athletes on stage that aren't ready. Now you just had something recently. Yeah. Did you, did it's, mean- it's very, it's so, it's so difficult. Cause I've had this a couple of times with clients and I'm like, I've had the talk where I'm like, Hey, you're not ready. We need to push a show back. And I either have a client that's like, okay, what do we got to do? Or I have the client that's like, no, I really want to do this show for whatever reason it is. Um, and y- it's hard because I have such high standards as an athlete myself and for my clients, but it's also like, okay, you lost 50 pounds. So that's great. But that doesn't mean you need to portray it in a bodybuilding show, maybe in a weight loss show. You know, it's like, if you, it's, it's bodybuilding, you can't get up on stage and not have some sort of muscle tone and physique you have and not have any abs. Well, the, the, <laughs> you know? the thing is, I, I know we're talking about coaching and I, and I guess it's just hard to as when you're coaching someone and they tell you like, 
for myself, being an amateur, they're like, I want to be a pro. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, me too. Right. And one of the things that I think about is, I hate to sound like this, but it's like, I want to be a pro and I want to go to Olympia. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, you can't even beat me. Right. Because if we step on the bodybuilding stage, you won't beat me. And that's not me being an asshole or arrogant because you know I have the least amount of self-confidence in bodybuilding. I don't really have confidence in bodybuilding. But when you like start looking at clients and you start looking at people that like, I want to be a pro, I want to go, I'm like, I will fucking smoke you. Right. And you're telling me you want to be a pro? Yeah, but like, I think that's 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 my thought process though. Like Right. But I think they're coming to us as you were eight years ago, saying, as eight years ago, I wanted to be a pro, right? And I looked stick thin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wanted to be a pro, but I don't think I deserved it. Are you saying that you think these clients think that they're deserving of a pro card at, at their current physique? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think when people come to us, I think in the, in the thought process, Jesus, excuse me. No one has ever said, Hey, my ultimate goal is to become a pro. I understand I have a long road ahead of me, but I want you to help me try to achieve that. It's mm -hmm. never that it's like, I want to go to Olympia. Yeah. You've never done a fucking show. Right. You look like shit and you look like you haven't even worked out. Right. And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just being real because I'm, right. I'm honestly tired within this industry. People saying, oh, you don't have to say that to someone. You shouldn't comment. That. Yeah. You probably shouldn't comment on someone's. Right. Right. But I want to talk about it because at this point in this fucking world, you can't talk about anything. So yeah. You know what? You look like fucking shit. You're not going to be a pro. You're 40 years old. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. the realest talk. Like I'm yeah. over, I'm not salty that I'm not a pro. I would, I would like to become one, but it's not the end all be all. And I'm not going to fucking right. it. like it. Just people just don't get it. Right. People have very unrealistic expectations of what their genetics will allow them to do. And I think that a lot of people don't understand how much genetics plays a role in the sport of bodybuilding. And I think they think, because I think I thought that at one point too, yeah. um, that I'm like, oh, I could look like that. And now that I'm like, yeah, I'm not black. I can't, <laughs> I can't look like that. Right. Um, you know, I, th there is a, a tap for, for me and how I look. Well, and I don't think people in the beginning of this, when they start competing, I don't think they understand that. Yeah. You know? And so they, I mean. I, well, because you compare. You can compare. Right. Well, right. I mean, you compare, I mean, I'll say one of my clients, that's a very, very young client looks at me and I'm like. I'm not going to say my age, but I'm like twice your age mm. almost. And I'm like, you're comparing you natural only working out for two years when I've been working out for 15 right. and I'm not natural. You can't compare yourself. You're never going to get shoulders like me until 10 years from now, right. you know? Um, so it's hard, but well, I don't know. Okay. So the goods, I don't know where we got off track. I was saying all the good things, um, bad things. I mean, obviously the opposite of everything that I said. Um, Pushing, pushing gear all the time, no off season, not looking at labs, not good communication. Yeah. All of those things. I think coaching goes more to um, the women. You know, guy coaches not understanding how women respond to certain things or what happens and, and keeping a close sure. chart. Right. So I think that's men can take a lot more than women. But once you start dabbling and once mm -hmm. you start going down that road um, and probably you know, 50, 50, you're getting fake stuff. So you're taking other stuff that doesn't, yeah. you know, so. I mean, that, that alone is a whole topic that we will probably have a whole podcast for, but like, yeah. and it's going to drive me crazy and I'll get very heated, but the amount of gear, like gear steroids that, that people coaches are putting people on women, I'm sorry, right. putting women on yeah. is just insane. And it's disgusting. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many clients have come to me from a previous coach and they're on five different things that I've never even taken. And they're an amateur, never done a show. Yeah. And I'm like, how, yeah. you know, like how, how is this? Okay. Where are you getting this information? You know, it's just, it's, it's very bad. And it ha happens all the time from bikini competitors to women's physique. Yeah. Like, and I get it. If you're wanting to be a women's physique, you know, yeah, you got to push you it. You got to get big. Yeah. You got to push it. But like, there's still a timeline. It's going to take years to do that. You're not just going to change overnight because you're taking seven different compounds, yeah. you know? So, yeah. and like you said, the fake gear, 
that's going around too. You just, you don't even know exactly what you're taking. Um, you know, and I think, I think a good coach will, a good coach will guide you through that process. They will say, Hey, where are you getting your stuff from? You know, what, you know, talk about the risks too. talk about the side effects, especially for females, because people don't talk about that online. No, nobody talks about it. I'm one of like two people, I think in the whole industry, me and Corey are like the only two and maybe Megan, um, Scooby. Oh yeah. 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 You know, like talks, talks about PEDs for women and yeah, that'll be a whole nother, that'll be a whole nother podcast that we'll get into. Maybe we'll bring guests on or something. That'd be nice. (laughs) Maybe if Ty will allow it. (laughs) Um, okay. So what we expect from clients, we kind of already talked about that. Yeah, man, I I, I just fucking be on point, especially with me. I have no fucking, I have no. I guess, I guess if any of your clients are listening, they need to know that. I don't care. I'll say this right now. If any of my clients are, (laughs) any of my clients are listening, I have no fucking remorse. So I expect you to do exactly what I do. Well, you know, and a lot of people and the people that come to me for coaching or come to us for coaching, I think. 80% 80% of the people that come to me for coaching yes. say that they come to us because we t- we say it how it is. Yes. We don't sugarcoat I, I shit. Agree. I agree. Like we hear that all the time. And I guess I should have said that in the beginning. That's how my coaching is, is like, I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm going to tell you yeah. honestly and upfront what needs to be done, yeah. what we need to do, how to do it the healthiest way possible. So yeah, it's good. It's a good thing that you have no remorse. I mean, of course there's you know, something seriously happens like what, like a death in the family or or an injury or, or being sick. Yeah. Like I'm really good easy with that. If you're sick, I'll take, I'll tell you, take the whole week off. Right. You know, it becomes complicated, but it's also like, it's also ingrained in what we do. Like, and I say that because listen, you know how much I love my dad. Right. Uh And when my dad was, I wasn't in prep when my dad was in the hospital, I didn't, I took a meal with me and then I didn't eat. And then I, I didn't eat until I think like the next day. And then I went home, grabbed some meals and I came back, you know, and of course he was okay. He was stable. It's not like anything was like seriously, seriously wrong. Um, but you learn how to deal with it when certain things happen. Obviously if somebody's like in ICU and unstable, you'd be like, okay, like you gotta. Yeah. Like if there's something serious, but But like I said, it's ingrained in us as athletes. My dad was in the hospital. I packed all my meals. Right. I took everything. And And, he was stable. And I wasn't in prep. I was just in the off season. Right. I knew it was going to be a fucking long day. Right. But that's, that's that's how it is to be prepared. It's, it's taking that extra step to be prepared. And again, that's what we expect from our clients who are in, who are competitors, not a lifestyle client, but competitors is you actually care about every single thing that you do to become right. a pro, if that's what your goal is, that right. that becomes second nature, that you just pack your meals and you're ready to go it, no matter what happens. Yeah. So it's called being prepared. It's called giving a shit. It's <clears throat> called that. Every, every episode, every episode. Well, get used to it. It's like we're at home. All right. So what else? <laughs> Let me show you. All right. So what is, what's friendships? Do you think we talked about this? Oh uh, yeah. You needed me to elaborate more, huh? Yeah. F- fill me in on that one. <laughs> so should a coach be your friend? Should you be friends with your clients? How long has the client been with me? <laughs> Um, a year. No, no, no. I won't be your friend after well, for no. one year. No, two no. years. Two years. Yeah, we're definitely okay. Or if I had a pr- so, I'm closer to the people that I've ha- already had, like uh, not relationship, but like Christian, for instance. Mm-hmm. Christian, I know I've known Christian for. Ye- years i don't know him very well but i've known him we talked you know right, we, right. I, he used to go to my old gym so christian is someone that i'm very much closer to mm-hmm. um with my clients like he's like out of the people that i have right now he's probably the one that i'm closest with yeah so but i would say yeah like you know he's someone that is more special to me yeah 
because of our relationships, you know? Yeah. I think, I think we wrote friendships in there just because I think, I think there's some sort of expectation from sometimes clients that think yeah. that we are their friends yeah. and we should constantly be talking and things like that. Um, you know, and I think that sometimes relationships can form from that. You can form from clients and, sure. you know, if you have a lot of things in common, obviously bodybuilding isn't going to be the only thing. Um, but it, I don't think it's, all the time necessary are going to happen. And I don't no. think that texting someone every single day, you know, to become a friend, it's yes. it's like, you know, you, you are paying me and I'm yeah. here to critique your physique and yep. I want to be there for you mentally, yep. you know, if you're going through things, yeah. but at the same time, there is, there does have to be that boundary that it's like, I'm not your friend. Well, right? so yeah. So there was, uh, I've had a few coaches and, um, you know, Jacoby became a friend, you know, um, which is nice to have a coach. Cause then you, you feel like you really care, you know, like he came over, our, you know, for my prep, he came over, he uh, came to our wedding, came to our wedding, you know, he, I, he treated me as if it was like my Super Bowl, And I always talk about that. Like mm -hmm. it was my Olympia, the way he treated me. That's, that's a, that to me is a real coach. Yes. He's local, but like to do that, that's right. me personally, like he treated me probably the best I've ever been treated. Right. Um, it was from a coaching perspective. Right. Um, so to see that, that's kind of one of the things that you always want to mimic, right? Like mm -hmm. seeing that from someone, you're like, man, I want to do that for somebody else. Right. Um, but there was coaches that I thought they were my friends and, you know, maybe they are, mm -hmm. but maybe it was a little different. I thought it was more. Yeah. Um, and then some coaches I've, I've came into contact with, I, they were not my friend. They were just a coach. Right. Now looking at it being this, being, you know, this, if I, if I was to go with a coach, I don't want a friend any longer. I want a coach. Right. You know, I think it works better that way. Yeah. And, and just, I say in bodybuilding, then the reason why, as I say that is because I look at football coach and, and bodybuilding coach, right? Football okay. coach, you're with them a lot. It's a per, it's, you're, the, they're there. Right. And like, you want to do is whatever you can for that coach. Like you play your heart out, right? Mm -hmm. Not to say you don't do it for a bodybuilding coach, but like you, they're there in the trenches with you. Right. For a bodybuilding coach, you're sending them like a picture on WhatsApp or, or email right. to this person that's in another state or whatever. So I'm not going to say I'm going to not give you my all, but I'm like, I'm going to give you my all, but I'm not going to like die for you. Right. Like, I feel like a football coach, you're like blow out your knee. Yeah. And then go back on the field with a blown out knee just to like, you know, right. Uh, that's how I feel with like coaching. Um, it's, it's two totally different things. Yeah. I think, I think you can definitely be friends with your coach if you happen to become, yeah. you know, that, but I think sometimes it works better if you're not, and you kind of have that boundary of, Correct. you know, it's just strict. This is exactly what we're doing versus a lot of messiness that could come with, you know, yeah. a friend. Yeah. Um, okay. So I feel like we kind of already talked about how to pick a coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean we kind of covered that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the best, I, like I said, the best thing is to be able to have a conversation with a coach. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's not only looking at the clients. So like, let's say you're looking at this coach. Well, let's see what their clients look like. It's not always that. No, and I think the big coaches in the industry, the flavor of the month, look at that. Mm -hmm. You look at that yeah. and then, you know, I'm not going to name names, but like what came out of one of the, you know, bigger people in the industry, they were running extremely dangerous protocols with diuretics, with yeah. gear. But that's see, like, but and, I, yeah. and I know what you're going to say is you're going to say, well, that's what you have to do for the sport. But at the same time, I truly feel that there's a healthier way to do it, that you can still achieve that yeah, so, in a healthy way. But so, I guess if a client doesn't get it. Okay, okay. So perfect. So I'm glad you touched on they were doing this or doing that. And then I was going to rebuttal with that's what you have to do. So the best thing about this sport, and we talked about it today, you don't, there's no, there's no diagram of what you have to do. X amount of weeks out right. or X amount of weeks out. Right. You can do whatever. That's the thing. 
is that we have this basis of 20 weeks out. Okay, we're going to start dieting mm-hmm. and you're going to be on long esters. <laughs> and then when you get closer to the show, um, we might start a couple fast acting esters. And then we're going to take Clen. And then closer to the show, you got to add when sh- it's like, dude, who the fuck came up with that? Yeah. Why? Because this coach said that and that coach said that. And this could like, okay, fine. Have you ever thought about outside the box? Right. Why wouldn't you run faster acting esters in the beginning? Yeah. Why wouldn't you drop the hammer in the beginning of your prep and add the clen and maybe fast acting compounds? There's, right. Like we said, there's multiple, multiple ways to do one thing, right? But, Especially dieting. But yeah, but that's so, but the thing is what I'm saying is that yes, yeah, dieting too. Like a thought process that I thought about, like, what if I if you go into prep, you take your calories. You fucking really drop them like for real, for real, Mm -hmm. because you still have fat on you. You still have energy. You had some fast acting compounds. You had a, you have a fat burner or a lipid, whatever the fuck you call it. A lipolytic. Lipolytic. Yeah. I don't know that shit. That's the correct term for everyone listening. Lipolytic. Sometimes it's a lipolytic. It's a fat, but that literally means fat. I literally get tongue tied. Well, that's your problem. Lipo is fat. Look at you, you fucking stupid know. shit. Lytic. <laughs> Give you a lytic. It, that's what it means. It's a fat burner. It's a fat yes. breakdown. But what I'm saying is that there's no right way. So like we were talking, right? And and uh, there was a client that we had and they were, asked us if we can do a fat burner beginning of prep, right? Mm-hmm. And I was talking to you. I said, hey, I'm going to put this person on a fat burner. You're like, well, why wouldn't you use that later on in prep? Mm-hmm. I said, well, why wouldn't you use it now? You're saying, well, your tools. Yeah. You don't bring out your tools. I said, well, there's a certain amount of weeks if they're 20 weeks out and they're running it for, let's say five weeks. What if it came off for five weeks? Yeah. And then you ran it again and you see how that person looked. Maybe you might not need it for the last five weeks because they've gotten like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's the thing. And again, it just goes back to there's, there's multiple different ways to do it. And, you know, sometimes, especially for me, I, I know what works and I know what has worked, but that doesn't mean that other things won't work either. But it's just kind of your standard of the way you do things, just like you go into the gym and you have your standard way yeah, of how you yeah, train. Yeah. That's the way that works for you. Yeah. That's how you get progress. That's what but, you like. But the Buddha, I would say, so what I would say, does it work for you? Because if you don't try something else, you don't fucking know. True. Every 100%. prep, everything that I've done has been so cliche in the fact that you do this 20 weeks out and then all oh, your 12 weeks out. So let's add this. And then all oh, you right. do this. And then closer to show you, I'm like, what the fuck? Right. Do you even have to add some of it? Like that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Start- and, it's, and, it, and it shouldn't be the same. And no. I don't think when I've prepped myself, I've looked at what I've done in previous preps, yeah. but I don't think it's ever been a hundred percent the same, obviously. So, you know, what, so what I would say from all this is furthering your, furthering your education as a coach. Mm-hmm. Now we just bought a J3U, right? Mm -hmm. I bought the uh, entry level one. I believe that's what it's called. Uh Level one. You brought the female module. Yeah. Um, I bought that a little bit ago that I've been working through. And doing that as a coach, I think is a good thing as well. Mm -hmm. Gives you different outlook. You know, it gives you a different uh, it's just continue, perspective. Yeah. It's continue continue education. education and bettering yourself as a coach. And, And I would say from... I like the way he does things, Mm -hmm. right? So John Jewett, I like the way he does things. Right. I'm more attracted to that type of prep, that type of off season, that type, Jesus Christ, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've changed things in my mindset and, and not using certain compounds. Right. I was lately with some of my clients, um, because I've seen things work a little better and not putting that stress on their health, you know, um, It's hard because I work at an HRT clinic and then I coach people and then bodybuilding, right? That I do myself. Yeah. So I'm in this like weird, like, oh, your health. Like I know like. What do you think I'm doing? I work in healthcare. So So, same thing for me. I have patients and we're trying to keep them healthy versus bodybuilding where it's like you're trying to do. That's again, why I always want to do it the healthiest way possible because you do have to think of life after bodybuilding Mm -hmm. as we always talk about. And if you just say, fuck it, and you're going to do whatever, run whatever, and without any, you know, yeah. what's, what's going to happen yeah. after yeah. you're done? You yeah. you have a life to live and you probably maybe have a family at that point mm-hmm. and you've slashed off how many years of your life because you wanted to say, fuck it. And yeah. now look at you. Question though. 
Answer. Thought about it a little bit. Go back and forth. Not being selfish, just answering, asking a question. Our last podcast, you asked me if I had regrets about playing, or excuse me, two podcasts ago, I think. If you had regrets about playing football, not playing football. Okay. And I said, no. I said, no, in that podcast. I was like, no, I don't have regrets, you know. But I rewatched the podcast and I thought about it. I do so have. Do you want to tell the people? What? That you have a regret? No, no, no. I, oh. I'm going to go into it. So I do have regrets. <laughs> I was like, what? I have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have regrets for not playing football. I thought about it, you know, thought about it. I would say this. I've left coaches. I quit bodybuilding. I came back, right? Whatever I do, and I put out a post about it, whatever I do is my journey, right? It doesn't fucking matter. And I don't have to tell anybody. Right. Um, you know, I suppose quit bodybuilding in December, right? I might do bodybuilding later this year. I might do something. You don't know. And I'm not going to be out there in the public to tell you what I'm doing. Right. But I would say this. If I stopped bodybuilding right now, I would probably regret it for the rest of my life. And I don't know what our expected lifespans are. Right. Mm -hmm. But I can say if we have to go through life, not doing what we want to do and what you want to do always comes with a consequence and a risk. Mm -hmm. I would Did you rather. Say consequest? Did I say consequence? I don't know. It sounded like consequest. Maybe you say conquest. Play it back, Ty. What did he say? <laughs> consequest? Consequence? Consequence. No. I guess you do get tongue tied. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. You can finish. <laughs> um, I would rather know that I live my life accordingly, I guess, how I want to. And I know something later on in life is always going to happen and hopefully yeah. it doesn't, but it usually does. Right. Because that's like from the food, from everything, especially now, like yeah. you just have to that's hope it's not saying. that bad. Um, but what I'm saying is that when we talk about going pro this and that, you have to do it for yourself. This whole process is for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that. I have to do it for me. Mm -hmm. I have a horrible problem of comparing myself to the top level pros. Right. I and, think a lot of people do. Yeah. And the reason why I think I've quit bodybuilding a few times, I'm scared for my health is number one, mm -hmm. usually overthinking is number two. And then the self doubt, because I'll never look like what I thought I could look like. Right. But you're overthinking the self-doubt. You're overthinking yes. the health. Yeah. It's yeah. all just, it's, it's all just intertwined. So I guess what I'm saying I is know. that. I hear it every other day. <laughs> I actually talked to myself in the mirror today for the first time. Did you? Yeah, it was really weird, but it worked. Were you naked? I actually had my pants off. It was after I took a <laughs> shit and I had my shirt on and I actually talked to myself in the, uh, in the <laughs> mirror, but yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Hey. Just being real. Um, so I guess the premises of that whole like rant is I'd rather live my life yeah, knowing that I can do what I can and do what I want and hopefully enjoy it. And at the end, I could say, man, that was a good time because you'll never look like what you look like now. Right. And you'll never look like you look like in the past. Right. But you don't know what you're going to look like in the future. So live in, try to live in the now for some sort. Yeah. You know, I agree. And try to. Enjoy the process because that's not what I do. Enjoying the process is what do you know? enjoying the process is a very difficult thing in bodybuilding. Um, and I don't think I truly enjoyed the process. I think I really enjoyed the process in my first prep because I was like, woo, it's so much fun. Like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And then I think in my last show, um, or my last prep. Can I ask you this? Yeah. How much fire did you have for your first show? Like, how much fucking excitement? Like were you just Probably like not as much as you because really? remember I was surrounded by people that were not in the sport. Oh, yeah. So every single person that came to my show, besides my couple of my family members, yeah. well, I think my whole family was there. Um, as most people I had at a show ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most yeah. support, but I don't talk to any of those people. They they don't understand yeah, yeah. and yeah. they, you know, um my set. It was just it was very exciting, but like I was so nervous. You did bikini, right? Your first show? Yeah, I did bikini. I was not lean. Should have been way leaner, I mean, but I felt so it was the leanest I had ever been. Yeah, that's so the, that's, you know, when we go back to like clients and stuff, yeah, not that yeah. I want to get back into it, but like, you know, it was my very first show and I was like super excited. I thought I had like one single ab vein, which I can't, I can't see anymore. But back right. then I was like, oh, yeah. jacked yeah. and so lean. I felt so good. And I looked great yeah. because I looked better than anything I'd ever right. seen. Right. 
Right. But right. that doesn't mean that I looked the best. I got second, right. but it was a local show, you know? So it was like, I got, I got. how good do you really look? Could I have wanted a national level stage? Absolutely not. I probably got dead last, but. There was uh when I, when I first competed, so I was 22 and there was five guys in. Were you super heavy? No, I was a heavyweight. But I was, I was supposed to be like a light heavyweight. I, I wasn't. But you had a little couple extra pounds to lose, huh? Like, <laughs> I was 214, but it was, it was, I had abs, right? So it would, but it wasn't like, you know. Yeah. Um, I probably should have been like one. Under. Were you really cocky though? My first show? No. Really? No, because. It's very surprising. I was, I was just nervous. I was just glad I arrived. My second show was two years later. I will show, I've never, I don't think I've showed. I was fucking so cocky and that started <laughs> that right there started i feel like the 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 continuous like i didn't win oh swear to god if you if i showed you oh. that was the first time that someone came up was like that guy didn't win you won and the winner what did came, you what did you win what place I at that show got second. I didn't win the overall. Oh, so you got first in your class. Yeah. Was it by default? No. Oh, okay. I actually beats. It was only me and some other person. Okay. So I when I had to that show, people were like, oh, that don't, my, you know, of course. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, like I didn't know the second show, same thing. So it's been, it, it's been years. It was like a fucking, like, you got to get that out of your head though. No, but it's funny. It's funny. It's like, it's, it's not like funny for me. No, I know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the second show I was super cocky. Third show I beat Brandon. Okay. So I felt bad. Yeah. But then I was going to the overall and yeah, whatever. And then, uh, I don't, I don't know. I feel like after that has been kind of like trying to find my so basically what we need to tell everyone is that you got to get out of your head <laughs> and you stop comparing yourself to others stop worrying about the placement because at the end of the day as you guys always know i use the hashtag you versus you because it's always yeah. about yourself and it's very hard because we're competitive and we want to win but if you constantly long for yeah the trophy and the pro card yeah. and the first place. And I'm never good enough because that you will never be good enough. That's and that I, is the sport yeah. of bodybuilding is you can always be leaner. You can always be bigger and you're never going to be good enough. So that's, that's what it's become. For yeah. Me. If yeah. we can give advice, it's, it has to be how good you're doing, how much better I'm getting. Right. right? I agree. And that's it. Um, but, I think that about wraps up coaching. Anything you want to add? No, no, I think, I think it's right. good. So that was podcast of coaching <laughs> of a rant. Uh, thank you. Hope you liked it. Stay tuned until next time.